I'm uh, Andrew Scott, Professor of Economics at London Business School, and I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Hundred Year Life, which covers what I think is one of the really big trends that's going to reshape the world, the corporate world, and above all else, our individual lives. So I've always been a bit frustrated about how people deal with this topic called ageing, as everyone knows. We're sort of living a little bit longer, but actually we're living a lot longer. So my starting point is that uh, life expectancy is increasing by around two or three years every decade. And I think that's phenomenal, uh, because all it means is that your children will live probably around 10 years longer than you, and you will live probably 10 years longer than your parents. But we haven't really restructured life, and we're still sort of living a life based around 70 years, what we call the three-stage life in the book of education, work, and then retirement. But if you're living to 100 and you want to keep that three-stage life, then retirement has to go up from something like 65 to about 80. That means it's a 60-year career. And if you say to most people, do you want to do your current job for 60 years, the answer is no. So we think we're going to see a multi-stage life emerge. So the really fundamental idea of the book is that we've got a lot more time and we're going to restructure time. The example I always give is it's like the day going from 24 hours to 32 hours. You do things differently. You do things at different times. You introduce new sequences and new stages. And that is what I think we're seeing already. We're seeing people in their 20s behave very differently. The age at which you get married, the age at which you have children, the age at which you start your career, changing completely. I'm seeing people in their 60s saying, I don't want to retire, I want to carry on working, or I want to do something different. And then you've got the people in their 40s and 50s who go, wow, I've got another 30 years of work to go, that's, that's more than I've done already, I really don't want to carry on doing what I'm doing, or I really need to majorly upgrade my health or my skills. So we're seeing new stages and new ages. And that's leading to some very interesting HR challenges because what people want from work when they do it and how they want to structure their work-life balance is changing in a major way. One of the interesting things is when we first started talking about this to people, we'd say, hey, you're probably going to live for longer than you thought. We got a really weird response. A bunch of people went, oh no. And it's like, well, hold on a minute, you know, we just told you you're going to live for longer than you thought, you're going to be healthier than you thought, and more productive than you thought, and you think this is bad news. And the reason is that most people immediately thought, I've just got to work for more. And I think that was a really interesting insight for us, because you know, if you think about how to make use of this extra time, you don't just want to work, you want to do something else with it. So we constructed this framework to think about what would make a good life. And we said, well, okay, you've got your financial assets. You, you, you've got to invest in your financial assets. And the longer you live, the more you've got to invest in those. But to just do that is to misunderstand what makes for a good life. So we say there's three other intangible assets. The first one is what we call productive assets. These are the skills and knowledge you need to be effective at work. And of course, if you live to 70 and retire at 60, you can kind of get away with what you learn up until the age of 20. But if working life extends to 80, you need to upgrade in a major way your productive skills, your education. So we think constant recreation of your skills, reinvestment in your skills, and lifelong learning is growing in importance. Then a second and really important intangible asset, we call it vitality, and it's made up of two parts. One is your mental and physical health, and boy have you got to invest in that. If you're just working 24-7, you won't live 100 years, you're going to die a lot earlier than that. And even if you do live long, it's not going to be good. You're going to have all sorts of stresses and strains. So you need to take time out, whether it be in small slithers of time, the evenings or the weekends or longer breaks, to invest in your physical and mental health. But then the other thing that's important in your vitality assets are your relationships. And study after study shows that what makes for a good life is creating the scope to love and be loved. And that's about close relationships. And again, if all you're doing is working for 60 years for a career, you're not going to be building up those relationships. And then the third intangible asset, the, the fourth asset in total, which we think is really important, is your transformational assets. Now in a three-stage life of education, work, retirement, you don't go through many transformations. My father worked in the same industry for his entire 40-year career. But the children coming through, and probably me as well, we're going to have to go through lots of changes of identity. It might be I'm moving country, it might be I'm moving sector, it might be I'm retraining, or it may be I used to be the boss and now I'm working part-time and I'm not the boss. But all those are a big transformation. It's about how you as a person shift and change. And that's uncomfortable. So we have to invest in supporting that change. So what we think, if you look at those four assets, the finances, the productive, the vitality, and the transformational. 
You can't take the three-stage life that was designed to work over 70 years and stretch it to 100. That's a 60-year career. And a 60-year career solves your finances, it solves your pension, but your productive assets will be running on red, they'll be empty. Your vitality assets will be red and running on empty, and you will never have exploited your transformational assets. So from that point of view, we think we just have to design a multi-stage life, where you'll have several stages to your career. One may be about making money, one will be a work-life balance, one may be about putting something back into society. And of course, the thing about that multi-stage life is you can arrange it in different ways. So that also changes people's career mindset a lot. Because in the three-stage life, where I've got one career and a linear career path, someone's age tells me their stage. You tell me an undergraduate, I know your age. You tell me you're a senior manager, I know your age. In a multi-stage life, that starts to disintegrate completely. Because I could be an undergraduate at 20, 40 or 60. I could be a senior manager at 30, 50 or 70. So we really have to unpick this concept of age that is no longer relevant but forms the basis of the three-stage life as we shift to a multi-stage life. Yes, I really enjoyed the conference. I mean, I, I give talks to lots of different conferences and you can always tell what the vibe is like. And this was a nice supportive vibe. There was a nice buzz in the audience. Uh, they, people seemed to be genuinely interested in the topics. And I thought they should be as well because the topics were great. I mean, from my point of view, technology and longevity are the two big challenges that every HR person has to deal with in their career and they were very well covered by uh, myself and other speakers. Um, and I liked that out of the room. I thought it was, it was in, uh, as a speaker I could see all the audience and the audience could see me and that always makes a sort of more intimate setting. So that uh, was great, it was good.